Before we continue, it is very important to know the risks behind trading in the foreign exchange. Please read the risk disclaimer before we continue. Our fourth step for trend recognition is support and resistance levels. Now support and resistance levels, whether we're trading or separating each trading session, is commonly used in technical analysis by many traders around the world. Some traders look back as far as a year, two years worth of price movement to get reference points. We're going to show you the importance of reference points or support and resistance levels during the trading session that you're trading. For example, take a look on the left hand side. Here we have the British pound US dollar five minute chart. Starting price 148.45. Now take a look at the time on the bottom of the screen 7.15 in the morning all the way to 8.45, 8.55 and approximately 9 o'clock right about here. At the beginning of the trading session the price moves higher from 148.45 to the highest level of 148.65. This would be a great reference point if the trend were to move higher or for us to start thinking that the trend will be moving higher later on. And now take a look at the price as the price moves lower to 148.10 just before 9 o'clock in the morning. So now we have two reference points. One happens to be 148.65 and the other happens to be 148.10, which is our support level. And take a look at what happened after 8.45 in the morning. We had the price retrace or move back up to approximately 148.40. Then it started moving back down. Then it started moving back up to approximately 148.40. 50. Because we have these two reference points of 148.65 and 148.10, we would wait for the price to move either lower, breaking that 148.10 to 148.05, 147.90, or having the price move past the session high of 148.65 and making a new high of 148.66, 67, and so on in order for us to determine or start thinking that the trend is up instead of down. See, these two reference points become what we call support and resistance levels, but they're very important, especially when they're made at the beginning of the trading session. And the further apart they are, the better it is for us, because later during the session, as the price movement stays in the middle, eventually it will break one of these two reference points. And if it continues making newer lows and it breaks the 148.10 to 148.09, 148.08, and so on, that will give us more of a confirmation of a downtrend. Allow me to give you another example. Take a look at the screen on the right hand side. This is part of step four. We must wait for a good retracement in the opposite direction of the trend. At least 20 to 25 pips for the GBP USD and 15 to 20 pips for the Euro USD to eventually come back down and break a newer level. Now, we're going to use in this example support and resistance levels as well as that retracement feature that we mentioned. Now take a look on the left hand side. We have our open price of 163.06. We have a session high of 163.19. And we have a session low of 162.70. Take a look at the price movement. But first, this happens to be 7.20 in the morning. Our reference points, which is our support and our resistance level, were made within the first half hour, 30 minutes of the trading session in the US. Now take a look at the price movement after we made a new low of 162.70. The price movement started going back towards the middle ground, eventually looking to move higher, 
but it did not break the session high. Eventually, it did come back down past 9.30 in the morning to break the lowest level of 162.70. This is what we look for in order for us to determine the trend in the market or to give us a better idea of the market's direction. Now, the retracement level becomes more of a confirmation of the market direction. Take a look at what happens. Once we reach the lower levels of 162.70, the price starts moving back up to the open price of 163.06. As we mentioned, we always want the price to move away from the session open or from the open price of the start of the session. Therefore, we're not looking to place any buy or sell orders at this point because we're back at square zero, open price. But take a look at what happened after the price starts moving lower and eventually breaking the lower level of 162.70 to 162.60, 162.55, 162.40. The key in this example is not only support and resistance levels that were made early on as reference points, but eventually this big retracement. Once the trend was down, at least we thought it was down for the moment, we had a pullback of more than 15 to 20 pips to eventually have the price come back down and make a newer low, giving us a better indication of a downtrend. These retracements are very important when we're trading. Why? Because we have to give the market not only time, we have to give it room to breathe. These retracements are going to become very important factors, especially for our risk management. We will get into that later on in the session. First, remember, as part of our trend recognition, we must have a good retracement in the opposite direction of the trend for it to come back down, as we see in this example, to make a newer low, giving us more proof given us more confidence to place sell orders based on the information we have in front of us. Now, just before we end this topic, we would like to give you an observation and a reference when you're trading in the foreign exchange. Normally when the trend, as you can see here in this example, after nine o'clock in the morning, when the trend is confirmed, we could remain consistent in the trend until 1130 to 12 noon. This time during the U.S. session can be the most dangerous session to trade because Europe is starting to prepare itself to leave the market. This is when we can see larger retracements than normal and even possible reversal levels happen during that time when Europe is leaving the market. So when you're trading in the foreign exchange, if you're about to place a trade in the direction of the trend at 1130 in the morning, you might want to hold off till approximately 12 noon, maybe 12.30, to make sure the trend will continue after Europe has left the market. So keep that in mind when you're trading in the foreign exchange. 11.30 to 12 can be a tricky time to trade because of the possible volatility on the reversal levels or retracement levels because of Europe leaving the market. Now to recap what we've learned, remember, to determine the direction of the market, number one, we must have a starting price. Number two, we must give the market time to develop. Number three, we must let the price move away from the session open, depending on the session we're trading. 40 to 50 pips on the pound, 35 to 40 pips on the euro. We must also wait for a good retracement to give us a better confirmation of the trend of the market. Last step in determining the trend for the different sessions of the trading day. We have to understand the correlation of different currency pairs. Not only is this good to apply for understanding the trend or the direction of the market, but this is also very important for when you look at to place your entries. Allow me to give you an example. Take a look at these two charts. Here we have a GBP USD five minute chart. Take a look to the right. We have a Euro USD five minute chart as well. I want you to take a look at the price movement. Here we have the British pound forming a V, price moving back up, eventually going back down to the lower levels of 147.40. Now take a look at the Euro. 
we also have a V-shape price movement moving back up to eventually come back down to make the newer lows at 123.20. What are we trying to show you? We're trying to give you an example of why it's important to view more than one currency pair when you're trading in the foreign exchange. Because there's a correlation between different currencies like the euro and the British pound, it's good to view them together. When you look into the term and the trend for the euro, it's good to have a British pound chart, same time frame, to give you reference points. If we can see here, the trend was moving down, and I look to the left, and the British pound is also moving down, consistent with my expectations and the price movement, I will feel a lot more confident if I'm looking to place a sell order, and not only do I have one currency pair moving down, but also having another currency pair like the British pound doing the same thing. And for an even better confirmation, instead of just using two different charts, we can use four. The British pound dollar, euro dollar, five minute charts. Also, we can add the US dollar Swiss franc, which will be reversed because the US dollar is first and the Swiss franc is second. And the US dollar Canada, also five minute chart. Now take a look at these two graphs. You can see the price movement moving down, eventually to come back up. Look at the US dollar cat. Looks a lot nicer, a lot cleaner, but look at the V shape and then the price movement moving up as well. That would be a perfect correlation if we had four different charts as you can see here and we had the price movement for the pound moving up, the Euro USD moving up, and having the US dollar Swiss franc moving down along with the US dollar Canada moving down. Once again, when we're trading, we need reference points. We want reassurance. Anytime we can get a clearer picture of the direction of the market to place our trades, the better our results could be. So this is another example how you can give yourself more reassurance while you're trading. Remember, in the market, we're never going to be 100% accurate when we trade, but we want to limit our risk. And this is another good example on how not only to limit your risk, but this is another example on how to confirm the price move.